Yes, and he had desired for his habitation. Now, to be chosen, Clint chose me, Brother God. And I chose Clint. Now, there was others. <laughs> there were others. I don't know that anybody ever other than Clint asked me to marry him, though, now that I think about it. <laughs> but there were others. <laughs> and I, there were others that he did. But guess what? He chose me for his own. And I chose him for my own. Bless the Lord. What does it mean to be Bless chosen? The Lord. What does it mean? It means one who is the object of choice or divine favor. Right. <laughs> one who is the object of choice or divine favor. Bless your Lord. <laughs> For the Lord hath favor. Yes. In Zechariah 2, 10 and 11, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. I just read that scripture once again to confirm that Zion is God's dwelling place. The scripture says, I will, not I, I might, didn't say that, or possibly, but the word says, I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. <laughs> says at the end, thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. Isaiah 28 and 16. Therefore thus saith the Lord God. Now, this not just anybody said this. Well, we're getting ready to read here. But it says, therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I. He said, he specifically addresses who it is who's speaking. He says, therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Then he specifically says, Behold, I, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make when I read that scripture, it stirred up something in me. And I wrote a little paragraph under the five thoughts. Who is it that made this promise? He said, the Lord God. He reiterates by saying, I, I lay inside a foundation. He goes on and says, a stone but not just any stone. Yeah. It wasn't just a stone. <laughs> it wasn't just any old stone. But he says, I lay inside a tried stone. <laughs> a precious corner stone. <laughs> a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make Oh. 
why she unstable, unleveled. Have you ever tried to walk on unlevel ground or unlevel floor? We've been trying to look at possibly buying a house. Well, through the years of living in older homes, I've learned the experience of walking through, and I can almost shut my eyes, and I can feel unlevel <laughs> in the foundation. <laughs> Because I've lived in several older homes that's got slopes. <laughs> you know. So I, I, take a, I, I think about that a whole lot when I'm walking over a floor. And through our experience, I say, I've told Clint a couple times that, and I quit when we walk through the houses. Yes, your Lord. I say, it's a soft spot, Clint. It went, it went down a little bit. Right. You know what I'm, tell, what I'm saying to him? Something ain't exactly sure right there. I feel a little bit of yeah. weakness in it, you know. Well, it worries me. Because <laughs> I've seen what happens to Florida that's got some weakness in it. <laughs> that's weak enough, it's going right now, eventually. Which means a lot of money out of your pocket. Right. This is the Word of God says, I laid in Zion yes. a stone, yes. a tried stone. A precious stone. Bless your Lord. Sure foundation. Yes, amen. He that believeth shall not make haste. A stone that is precious and sure. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone amen. of the foundation. Yes, he is. That amen. was to be laid and now has been laid by God. Amen. He completed it on Calvary. Amen. He completed the work on Calvary, not just for the redemption and salvation of man, but for the purchase of the church Amen. of God. Yes, he is. <laughs> so where was it going to be laid? In Zion. Right. Not just anywhere, right. but he specified where the foundation was going to be laid. Where? In Zion. <laughs> In Mark 12, 1 through 11, and he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard, and he set hedges about it, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower. And led it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the husbandmen and servant that he might receive from the husband of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant. And at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully empty. <coughs> again he sent another. And him they killed, and many others beating some and killing some. But listen to this next scripture. Bless the Lord. Having yet therefore one son, <laughs> his well beloved, he sent him. <laughs> he sent him also last unto them, saying, They reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen and will give the vineyard unto others. And have ye not read this scripture? Now he's speaking a parable here, and he's talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. He knew, they knew, Clint, when he got through, who it was that he was talking to. Bless your Lord. They got offended because they knew he was referring to them, to the Jewish people, to the nation of Israel. But he says, then he says, 
Have you not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. See, he went unto the lost sheep of Israel, but they received him not. The, the parable is in regards to Israel and their rejection of the Messiah. Bless your Lord. But there also explains that he made Christ the cornerstone. Right. It says, What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? Because his own received him not, he will come and destroy the husband and will give the vineyard unto others. And have you not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. As far as the Jews, there are still those today who are looking for the Messiah. <laughs> They never received him. But because of their rejection, he became the cornerstone of Zion. <laughs> Matthew 10, and we're going to sort of flip-flop through some of the scripture. We'll read verse 1, 5 through 8, 11 through 14, and verse 16. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples... He gave them power against Amen. unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. <clears throat> these twelve, listen, these twelve Jesus sent forth. He didn't say, he didn't, uh, he was specific. He was specific in who it was. He said, for mm -hmm. He didn't say those people. Right. He didn't say the multitude, mm -hmm. which he said that that word had been used many times. Right. Right. He didn't say that the crowd. Right. That ain't what the word of God says. But it says he called unto him twelve. Mm -hmm. And then it says these twelve, mm -hmm. Jesus the cornerstone <laughs> sent <Yes>. forth. <laughs> Bless your Lord. He sent these 12 disciples forth. Yeah. For what purpose? It said, commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now listen. He says, Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out. 
Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Yes. There was a time, Clint, that Israel was a covenant people unto the Lord God. There was a time that they were the chosen ones. But the word of God establishes, as I've already read, that when uh, he come to his own, they received him not, but beat, beat, uh, beat him and killed him. And therefore, he gave it to others. And then the next thing that we see on the scene, that he calls these 12 disciples unto them. And then he commands them and he tells them, Peter, there's people in our midst. They don't 
that stairwell. The keys to the kingdom. You got some keys, Cliff? God 
forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles. For to provoke them to jealousy. Well, now listen, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Clear, God did not choose for them to walk away from them. He just gave them a choice. And guess what? They walked away from them. They rejected him. But he says, why, why do you think this? He said, it, it was because of unbelief. They were broken off. Then what does he say? And thou standest by faith. But then he says, be not high-minded, but fear. For I would not, brethren, that ye would be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the, gen the fullness of the Gentiles be come. Yeah. You say, Crystal, what, 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 are you, why, what are you trying to say here? I'm only trying and, and reading this scripture to show us how Israel, they were once the chosen people of the Lord. And, and, and the Lord had made a covenant with them and a promise to them, Clint. But because of their unbelief, it wasn't able to be fulfilled. And therefore, he turned to the Gentiles. But here he says, but be not high-minded, but fear. <laughs> yes, be not high-minded, but fear. I don't want you to be ignorant of this mystery, he's telling them. Bless the Lord. Blindness in part has only happened to Israel. There will be a time when the dispensation, the Gentiles' dispensation is done with. He will turn. There will be a 144,000 that will be saved. But he says, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. This is that time. This is that hour. This is the time for the church of God to work. To work. In Ephesians 5, 25 and 27, husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Why did he give himself for it? He loved it. He gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. That he might present it to himself. What? Present it to himself. Mm -hmm. A glorious church. The importance of the existence of the church. Why is she important? Because Christ loved her. He purchased her with his own blood. Yes, he did. Why? Because he's going to present her to himself. Mm -hmm. One day. A glorious Amen. church. <laughs> that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Not have spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without Yes, amen. The word of God has said it, and it is so. Lord, thank you, Jesus. God, the Lord, loves the church of God. He's chosen her for his habitation, and he will present her one day yes. a glorious church. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right now, it's hard to see that. I don't have a clue. I honestly cannot tell you how it's going to be done. I don't know. Amen. I 
I really don't. But I know it will be done yes, it will. by the washing mm -hmm. of the water. Yeah. Of the word. Yeah. That's how it's going to come to pass. And she'll be without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any mm -hmm. such thing. You know, sometimes we put so much, and I'm guilty of this, time in trying to figure it out. I've racked my brain about trying to figure out things before. Problems, issues that arose, finances, whatever. Just rack, 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 rack my little brain around it, trying to figure out how I'm going to fix it. How am I going to make it right? How am I going to get the work done? Yeah. I'm talking about in the natural right now. You know? But sometimes, clear, spiritually speaking, you'll look around and you'll see. And you, you, then you start saying, you know, start worrying, you know. And then you get bogged down, brother, God. Because all you can see is the, the bad and the ugly. <laughs> you know? Because the truth of it is, there is some bad. Yeah. And there is some other. Right. Jesus warned that there would be wolves that would creep in That's right. unaware. <clears throat> Not sparing the flock. Right. They don't care. Right. They, they, they're not worried about the church of God. <laughs> You, you get all bogged down. You know. Mm -hmm. But then you look, I told Clint, I, I had to do so much reading in you know, different at, at times while I was trying to work and different things. And I told Clint, I said, you know what, Clint? The more I read it, 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 it reminded me. Yes, amen. It reminded me, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to take place. Mm -hmm. I knew it. But you know, I sort of get, you sort of get by now because, you know. But then I started reading and reading all the scriptures and I thought, oh God, it's going to happen. Because it says, he loved the church, he gave himself for it. <laughs> that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, presented to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without flesh. Now in 1 Peter 2, 4 through 10, to whom coming as unto a living stone, this, uh, this allowed indeed of men, but what? But chosen of God and precious. This allowed indeed of men, <laughs> but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. That's you and I. We are lively stones. Built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner.
corner, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. There's people who are still stumbling at the word. Yes, amen. Being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But he goes on and he says, but ye, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. He goes on and he says, in time past, you were not even a people. You weren't even a people. But are now the people of God. That ought to excite us. <laughs> Do a little something to us. Yes, <laughs> you want even a people. But now. Yes, amen. The people of God. Yes, that's right. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained <coughs> mercy. Yes, you know, okay. Isaiah 62, this is my last scripture tonight. One through five. And I, I shared the scripture a few weeks ago. But honestly, I, I didn't even remember ever reading the scripture. And I know I've had to. But I felt led to share it again tonight. 62, one through five, Isaiah. For Zion's sake, will I not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all the kings thy glory that shall be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah. And that means my delight is in her. And thy land Beulah, which means Mary, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be merry. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. Yes, one day, one day, she will be a glory. Amen. Oh, yes, she is. She's one of he them. said that yeah. it, here in Isaiah, he says, For thy sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that <coughs> sort of reminds me of what Jesus told Peter the gates of hell shall not prevail against Amen. her yes thank you God thank you Jesus <coughs> I remember as a child and I was even thinking about this Monday night in service this was, um, Candace was probably 5 years old she's 25 now but it was during the time that we 29, 29 now uh came out and renewed our covenant to go on with the Church of God. But we were, I think, down in Hillsborough, Clint. They called it the Red Bar. And, um, there was a group of people there deciding to go on with the Church of God. And a spirit came into that place, into that building, and the Lord began to work. And we shared some Monday night. I mean, I've got grandparents 
My grandfather and my grandmother labored in the church, built the church there at Riesel. But during this time, I, ne I never saw Candace do this before then or after then. But the Lord began to work, and Candace was five years old. She walked up to the front, and I had no idea what she was going to do. She was just a little kid. I, I guess I probably wasn't even paying attention. But she walked up there, and she grabbed the flag, and she stood there, and tears rolled down her face, and she just began to raise her hand and stand there, a five-year-old child. <laughs> but the Spirit of God, sure God help. was working and moving. Hallelujah. The thing was, Sister Mary, it was all she knew. <laughs> Her and Caleb used to get dressed up and go out on the play. You probably going to be glad to know this. <laughs> <laughs> out in the playroom. And we'd stand there and watch them play church. <laughs> Preaching and shouting. They'd shout. They'd bob her heads and do what they had saw. You know, one night we sat down at the table. Little old Caleb wasn't big as nothing, was he, Clint? We all sat down. We said, Caleb, you want to say the blessing? He held his little head down. He said, shut it up. <laughs> he didn't know what he was doing. He was a child. But he saw they had been around it and they saw it. Bless your Lord. Not only was it real, it was rich. Bless your Lord. He used to be rich. God bless. God he used to ride her. God bless you. People used to get excited when somebody said, Thank the Lord. We got somebody's going. Involved in 
doing something that we're not fully aware of what we're being a part of, or what our responsibility is, or what the accountability is of it. <laughs> I don't like to find out after the fact from the cops what I've got myself into. You know, that's not a good feeling. You know. But I'm thankful, Clint, that I believe in my heart. I know who she is. Amen. And I want her to be as important to me as she is to the Lord. Bless your Lord. And I love her, and I don't want to be a stumbling block mm -hmm. and a hindrance mm -hmm. to her going on right. and fulfilling the perfect will of the Father. Mm -hmm. Do you know that as a member, <coughs> you can mm -hmm. be a hindrance? Right. You can quench the Spirit? Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. We need the Lord to help us to understand what we're a part of. And that we would be willing to yield to the Lord. That we could be those lively stones. Yes. That to offer up living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to the Lord. I appreciate you tonight. I pray that something's been said that's been a blessing. I, sometimes you feel like you don't <coughs> always completely deliver the message the way you feel like you received it. But I do desire to be more for the Lord than what I've been. And to be that, that means I need to draw closer to Him. And I just want to encourage each and every one of you. Don't, don't allow the enemy to take away your understanding, your revelation. Don't let the enemy destroy your joy. Because the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. God bless you.